Welcome to the Community Church Podcast. My name's Alan Cleveland. I'm the lead pastor at Community Church, and it's so great to have you uh, join with us as we explore God's Word today. My name is Carl. I'm one of the pastors here, and uh, um, it's so good to gather together. Amen? And uh, to dive into God's Word. And we've been in this series uh, in Ephesians and, and kind of walking through and looking at what God has to say, what He had to say uh, to this church in Ephesus, these churches in Ephesus, um, but what He has to say to us today. And so uh, if you have a Bible, just go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter 5. I'll get there uh, in just a, a moment, so I'll give you some time to get there on your own. If you need a Bible, just go ahead and raise your hand and uh, the ushers can get you a copy of God's Word. But I want to ask you a question as you're getting there. And, uh, and I want you to be honest, even if your kids are in the room right now. Um, now you're a little worried. You're like, what's he going to ask? Cover their ears. No, I'm just joking. Um, <clears throat> have you ever been embarrassed by something your kids did? Anybody? Raise your hand, right? Uh, and so um, there, there's a lot of times, right, that, that our kids do things and we're like, oh my word. And uh, more often than not, that happens in our home. And uh, so my son Silas in, uh, just started baseball, and uh, in, my, in my head, you know, I'm like, okay, he's, he's probably a lot like me, um, and he's got ADD, uh, or, or he has ADOSO, which is attention deficit, ooh, shiny object, okay? And so in my head, I'm like, oh, he's going to be the kid who's like, fo- you know, like, there's a butterfly, and he's like following a butterfly. So I, I, in my head, I'm like, he, he's going to be the kid who's, who's like distracted by everything, so I go to the first practice, and what I realize is, is, is he's the kid who's distracting everybody. So, so he's not the kid who's distracted by things. He's the kid who's looking at everybody else and like, hey, what's your name? What, what do you like? What's your favorite color? Who's your favorite Avenger? Like, what's your... I'm like, Silas, they're hitting balls. Like, you're going to get hit, okay? Stop distracting everybody else and focus. And, uh, and so the other day... Uh, dropping him off at practice. I wasn't. My daughter was relaying this to me. Uh, Amelia drops him off at practice, and he gets out of the van, and he's yelling across the parking lot, coach, I'm here, and just screaming. And I'm like, here, here's the reality, right? Here's what we know. When, when we think about our kids and how they embarrass us, right, where do you think they learned those things, right? Where do you think Silas learned all of those things? From Heather, right? <laughs> She embarrasses me sometimes too. Uh, it's interesting that when we spend enough time with someone, we begin to act like them. We begin to talk like them. We have the same mannerisms, right? We imitate them. The more time we spend with people, the more that we become like them. And the reason, it's the reason, listen, it's the reason we act like our parents. That our fear, right, our fear growing up is, like, I hope I don't become like my mom. I hope I don't become like my dad. And what did we become? Just like them, right? Some of you are still fighting it. You're like, "Mm -mm, no, I didn't. Yes, you did, okay? The more we spend time with people, the more we become like them. We imitate them. Jesus' method of discipleship, okay? Discipleship means that we're becoming like Jesus. His method of discipleship, his plan for discipleship was Uh, a principle that we call the principle of association. So Jesus, in Mark chapter 3, Jesus is, uh, he's going to send out his disciples to do some evangelism, right? He's like, I want you to go out and I want you to share about the kingdom. I want you to talk about repentance. I want you to talk about me with other people. And and he he doesn't hold a seminar. He doesn't sit them down and say, hey, here's the 10 rules for sharing me with other people. Here's, here's the 10 rules for furthering the kingdom. He doesn't do any of that stuff. He just says, listen, here's what I want you to do. Mark chapter 3, he says, I want you to be with me. I just want you to be with me. He invited them to walk with him, to be with him, to watch him. Why? Because he wanted them to imitate him. The word Christian actually means little Christ. It means that we're imitating Jesus. In 1 John 2, verse 6, it says this, Whoever calls themselves a follower of Jesus must walk as Jesus walked. That we need to walk as Jesus. And and so what Paul's going to do in Ephesians chapter 5 is he's going to say, listen, you need to walk this way. I was hoping that Aerosmith would come on and be like, 
but the guys wouldn't do it for me, and so, no, I'm just joking. But reality, like, listen, here's what Paul's about to say. He's saying, he's saying, listen, I want you to walk this way. I want you to walk as Jesus walked. And look at Ephesians chapter 5, okay? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. If you're there, say go. Chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, be, what does it say? Imitators of God. Be imitators of God as dearly beloved children. So just like, act like your dad. Be imitators of God. Be imitators of God. Walk as Jesus walked. Exact replicas. Well, how do we do that? How do we do that, Paul? How do we do that, Jesus? And so what Paul's going to do in this passage is he's going to give us five characteristics of someone who walks as Jesus. Okay? Five characteristics. I want to encourage you, challenge you to write some of these things down. Write them in your Bible. You can write in your Bible. That's okay. Um, if, if you're writing in the church Bible, then just take that Bible home. All right? <clears throat> so walk. Here's, here's the way we're called to walk. Number one is this. Walk in love. Walk in love. Look at Ephesians 5. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in, what does it say? Love. I'm not, I don't make this stuff up. It just comes right out of the Bible, folks, okay? And walk in love as Christ loved us. You see, it's, it's important for us to realize, right, what does is, what is this walking in love look like? Because I could say, hey, you guys should walk in love this week. Let's pray amen. And you have a million ideas of what that means. You have a million ideas of what that looks like in your life, to your neighbors, to your coworkers, to walk in love. And yet Paul says, walk in life, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The greatest characteristic of Christ that we are to imitate, the greatest characteristic that we're to imitate of Jesus is His love, okay? And the greatest evidence of His love is undeserved forgiveness. The greatest evidence, look at, look at me, the greatest evidence of God's love in your life is you giving others undeserved forgiveness, wasn't that the greatest evidence of God's love for us? Right? That Jesus Christ was nailed to a cross and he said what? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The greatest example of love was Jesus hanging on the cross and looking at you and saying, I forgive you. And even though you don't deserve it, I forgive you. God's love is so extensive that he offered forgiveness to sinful, rebellious, wretched people like me by sending his son to give his life on the cross so that you and I would never suffer death. And because forgiveness, because forgiveness is the supreme evidence of God's love, it will also be, it also needs to be the most convincing proof of our love. That if we're going to prove to the world that we are God's children, if we're going to prove to the world that we are imitators of God, then we need to go around and we need to forgive people. If you are in this room right now and there is unforgiveness in your heart and somebody hurt you and they took something from you, God is saying, listen, if you want to imitate me, then you need to forgive them even though they don't deserve it because that's exactly what I did for you. We need to walk in love. The extent of our love is going to, is going to be the extent of our ability to forgive. Here's the second thing. The second characteristic of someone who walks as Jesus is this. You walk in purity. You walk in purity. Look at verse 3. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among the saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Verse 5, for you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ in God. Ouch. 
Those are very strong words. And I believe what Paul is saying, what God is saying through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is that we need to walk in purity. That pursuing holiness is part of the nature of a follower of Jesus. And Paul goes on and he lists all of these things, right? That this should be the nature of a follower of Jesus. The path of purity is paved with avoidance. The path of purity is paved with avoidance. Let me, let me explain what I mean. What is, the, um, what is the first and most common thing in Scripture that God tells us to do when we face temptation? What does He tell us to do? To fight it? What does He tell us to do? To flee to run from it. And you know what? I, I don't know about you, but my life, I've spent a lot of time trying to fight temptation and it never works. And I don't know what it is about us that we think, man, I can, I can fight temptation. I got this. Like, I've been following Jesus for a long time. Like, I got an accountability group and I got, I got people on my side and, and whenever temptation comes, I can fight it. Really? David was able to kill Goliath, but he couldn't resist temptation. You think you're better than him? You think you're stronger than him? A man after God's own heart? Joseph, probably the greatest example in Scripture, when he's faced with temptation, he runs, he runs naked, right? He's like, I am getting out of here. David couldn't resist temptation temptation. What makes you think you can? God never called us to resist temptation. He called us to run from it, to flee. So listen, if you wrote down walk in purity, here's what I want you to do. Cross out walk and put run. Run. If you want to be a person who pursues purity, then you need to run from temptation. You see, we have this whole thing when we start to struggle with temptation. We're like, do, okay, so now you have this dilemma, right? Do I fight or do I flight, right? The whole fight or flight thing. And if you're a lot like me, then what you do is you slap and run, right? So you're like, I'm just going to slap and then I'm going to get out of here. And the reality is, is like God is saying, listen, don't even mess around with it. You've got to get out of there. You have to flee. So we run in purity. The third characteristic of someone who walks as Jesus is this. You walk in discernment. You walk in discernment. Here's what I, here, look at verse 8. Verse 8, it says this, for at one time you were darkness. So before you were, before you said yes to following Jesus, you walked in darkness. Like you couldn't choose to do God's will because you were blinded, because you were walking in darkness. For at one time you were in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the light, the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. We need to walk in discernment. And and the the way that we do that is spending time trying to figure out what's going to please God. How can my life be more pleasing to God? What can I do that will bring God more joy? What can I do that will please Him? You see, we don't think about those things. And, and I don't know about you, but my, my trajectory, right, my, um, my natural default is not to please God. My natural default is, is to please myself. And so I need to intentionally think about, you know what, what's, what's going to please God? How can I live in such a way that it's going to bring honor and glory to Him and not to me? That's what it means to walk in discernment. Psalm 1 says that they don't, followers of Jesus don't sit in the seat of mockers or stand in the way of sinners. We don't participate in the works of darkness. That's the way we used to live. But now we need to think about what, what's going to please God? How can I walk in the light? Walk in discernment. Number four is this, walk in wisdom. Verse 15, look carefully, look carefully, and everybody said, look carefully, 
Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish. Do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. You know how you, know how you keep yourself from being foolish? You know how you keep yourself from being foolish? Understand what the will of the Lord is. Listen to me. The will of God. What's God's will for my life? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to... Listen, this is God's will for your life. Read it. Understand the will of the Lord. So if you don't want to live a foolish life... So, so think about it this way. If I put a bunch of traps down this aisle, right? And a, a con of bear traps and bear... You know what I mean? Like if I had all these traps laid out... And, and you were to walk, and I was to say, everybody needs to come down this aisle. How are you going to walk down that aisle? Well, just come, here I come. Is that how you're going to do it? No, right? You're going to walk carefully, right? You're going to walk carefully. Listen, that's what wisdom is. Foolishness is running down that aisle thinking, well, this isn't going to happen to me. Nothing bad is ever going to happen to me. That's what a fool says. I'll never have an affair. Uh, we'll never get a divorce. I'll never struggle with gambling. You see, you know what the wise person does? You know what the wise person says? The wise person says this, I will do everything in my power to make sure that those things don't happen to me. The wise person is careful. They walk carefully. In a couple of weeks, um, when we finish up the book of Ephesians, we're going to go through the book of Proverbs. Seven weeks, we're going to walk through different, uh, different topics through the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is filled with, it's called wisdom literature, it's filled with the difference between someone who's wise and someone who's foolish. And so if you look back on your life right now, if you think back on, on the last couple of years of your life and you're like, man, that was a foolish decision, here's what you need to do. You need to get into Proverbs. And you need to start thinking about what does it mean to be wise? What does it mean to be foolish? Because if we're going to be imitators of Jesus, we need to walk in wisdom. The fifth thing, the fifth characteristic of someone who walks as Jesus. We walk in the Spirit. Look at verse 18. It says, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery but be filled with the Spirit. So, so here's the deal. This verse is not talking about alcohol. It's not talking about, well, are we allowed to drink? Are we not allowed to drink? Can we, can we drink but not get drunk? Listen, this verse has nothing to do with alcohol. This verse has everything to do with control. And what Paul is saying in this verse is he's saying the same way that when you're drunk, who's in control? Who's in control? Alcohol. When you're drunk, alcohol's in control. You are out of control, and you have allowed alcohol to control your actions and, and everything that you're, you're doing and you're being a part of. And so what Paul is saying is he's saying, listen, don't let alcohol control you. Instead, let the Spirit control you. So this verse is about control. Walking in the Spirit, and instead of letting something else control you, you let the Spirit of God control you. Jesus himself, he didn't even start his earthly ministry until God the Father sent the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself, who was fully God and fully man, said, you know what, I cannot do this on my own. I need the Spirit. And if Jesus needed the Spirit, if Jesus was dependent upon the Spirit, then you and I both need to be dependent upon the Spirit. We need to walk in the Spirit. As the worship team comes up, I, I want us to think for a moment. Those five characteristics, those five characteristics are, are the characteristics of someone who walks as Jesus who is imitating Jesus, okay? So, so if you were to say, hey, how, how can I imitate Jesus? Well, you should walk in love, you should walk in purity, right? 
You should walk in discernment, you should walk in wisdom, and you should walk in the Spirit. That's what it means to be an imitator of God. That's what it means to walk as Jesus walked. But I want you to think for a moment about this. Those five things are a result of someone who is walking with Jesus. You hear me? Be imitators of God. That we're to walk as Jesus walked. But the way that we, the, the result of those five things, those five things are a result of us walking with Jesus. So let me say it this way You walk as Jesus when you walk with Jesus. You will walk as Jesus when you walk with Jesus. And here's what happens in a passage like this. We come to a passage like this and we want to look at it with binoculars, right? We want to be like, oh, that was really good. My neighbor needs to hear that. And we look at it with binoculars, right? We're like, oh, man, I'm going to send that podcast to my coworker because they, they really needed to hear that. And what God is saying to us this morning is this. I want you to look in the mirror. I want you to look in the mirror. Are these five characteristics evident in your life? Are these a result of you walking with Jesus? Because if you're walking with Jesus, you will walk as Jesus. You will imitate him. You will look like him. Be imitators of God, therefore. As beloved children, as dearly loved children, walk as Jesus. In Acts chapter 4, there's a story about the disciples. So Jesus is gone. He died on the cross. He was buried. He rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he leaves them by themselves. Well, he sends the Spirit, thankfully. Jesus is gone, and the disciples are going out, and they're, they're imitating Jesus. They're doing the things that Jesus did. Because why? Because they had spent time with him. They'd spent three years with Jesus. And being with Jesus, they're now acting like Jesus. They're imitating him. And, and in Acts chapter 4, there's this story of, of these religious leaders. And they notice these disciples and they're like, they, they, they act like Jesus. They're talking like Jesus. And you know what it says in Acts chapter 4? It says that they noticed that they were with Jesus. They were walking as Jesus because they walked with Jesus. So my question to you this morning is, as you reflect on your own life, as you take a look in the mirror, are you walking as Jesus? And if you're not, listen, and, and this is just, we come to this place, we're all in, in a different place in our journey with, with God. But as you come to this place this morning, if you look in the mirror and you say, you know what, I'm not walking as Jesus walked, then here's where you need to start. Just walk with Him. Spend some time digging into this book and just say, God, I want to walk with you. I want to learn from you. I want to hear from you. Hey, thank you for watching. We trust that you were blessed by what you saw and experienced with God's Word today. If you have a concern, a prayer request, or if you would like to participate financially in the ministry of Community Church, you can find that information on the church website. God bless you. Have a great week. And shalom.